Greetings guys, it's Irish again. Um, in this LDC Now, or LDC Now slash GNU's, uh, we're going to talk about s switching to Linux. So uh, with me I have Accubase. Hello. And Kiera, did I say that right? Yeah, good morning or afternoon, everyone. So, yeah, I thought about doing this solo, but I think... Uh, it would have been a little unstructured and a little bit rambly, so I decided to bring in some people and just do this a lot later than normal. So uh, I guess what's the first thing a person should think about when they move over to Linux? Uh, I, I'm, it really depends on what kind of... As, as we're kind of saying before, I'd really kind of say you need to think about what you actually want from the computer, what you actually want to be doing with it, what your kind of goals are, computer-wise, I suppose. I mean, it really depends exactly what kind of software you're planning to run on it. If you've got any particular software needs, you know, you know the, the thing that everyone always says is, you know, oh, I can't run Photoshop, or things like that. I suppose everything like that needs to be considered. Yeah, I see. I, I probably put a couple people in, or I know you're not supposed to put people in categories, but I feel like if you're going to web browse or do emails or YouTube, you can pretty much run anything you want. I, I pretty yeah. much almost fall into that kind of category. And then there's the ones who are programmers or are security analysts or are pen testers. And there's different levels of why you want to move over then there's servers and stuff like that do you want to set up a lamp server or a mail server or a web server and then that tells you which distro to move over to what do you think here well as far as uh, you know like you said and th there's nothing wrong with categorizing your users i mean even in the it world you have different categories of users you have your regular users you have your power users you have your sysadmins. So, you know, whenever you're trying to decide, okay, maybe I want to learn Linux, um, you know, it's like you guys, it's like Agube said, you know, you got to really kind of stop and think for a moment and figure out, okay, why? What do I want to get out of this? Because, um, you know, Linux, like anything else, I mean, it's just an operating system. Uh, an operating system is just a means of letting you interact with your machine. So, you know, if you're like, you know, a hardcore PC gamer and you really love your Steam and you can't live without the latest and greatest games, you may not have the best time on Linux. Um, you know, yeah, you have Wine, which can play some games, uh, some Windows games, but, uh, you know, it still struggles with keeping up with a lot of the newer mainstream games. So, you know, if you are serious about Linux, but you're also a gamer, you're probably going to be living on a dual boot system for a while. But, you know, there's other purposes for it, too, including, you know, reviving old hardware that's dead, an old laptop from, like, 10 years ago, which would probably run a lightweight Linux distro just fine. Um, you know, there's forensics as well, uh, PC repair, if you need to repair hard drive partitions or anything like that. Uh, it's all the Linux, there's a lot of Linux utilities that are used for network forensics and for um, PC forensics in general, so... You know, there's a lot of options out there, and it really just depends on what it is you're wanting to get out of Linux. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, there's definitely... See, I feel like a lot of people just get fed up with Mac or Windows, and they just jump headlong into, uh, into Linux without really thinking about it. They, like completely blow away stuff and then they are like oh crap uh i didn't mean to blow away my windows thing because i don't really like linux now and now i don't have a way to get back to my old os so it's probably best for me i dual booted for like the longest time and you know if anything happens to my gentoo here i would probably put windows back on here and dual boot because it, I am one of those gamers who has to, you know, I like to play The Sims, and The Sims doesn't play well in Linux for sure. So I, that's the only reason why I have my Windows machine downstairs is so I can, you know, play certain games. 
Yeah, and, you know, on the mention of that, you know, too, it's like, I, I've been running pure Linux for, I'd say, the past year and a half, almost two years now, with no Windows dual boot, just a Windows VM that I have living in VMware Workstation for when I absolutely need it. It's not the most ideal thing for playing games, but, you know, like, lately I've been realizing the LibreOffice Calc, which is like the Excel version of LibreOffice, it has some limitations when it comes to pivot tables, so... Like, even in my own job now, I'm finding I have to boot into my Windows VM and use Excel so I can get properly formed pivot tables. So, like, that's just an example of a limitation there. But, I mean, if you're a, a spreadsheet user who doesn't rely on pivot tables, then LibreOffice Calc is a very good substitute. It actually has a lot of features that Excel doesn't have. The LibreOffice page has a nice comparison of each of their Office Suite programs um, and how it compares to their Microsoft Office counterpart. Yeah, I agree. I, I would recommend, like, if you're really considering moving over to Linux full-time, is to probably put try a couple distros in a virtual machine. That's what I did. I tried... My first one was Ubuntu, Linux Mint. Uh, I fell in love with Linux Mint for a like few months for sure, and I did do a boot with that. So, and then I moved up to other distros as the time went by. But yeah, I think don't like go full fledged into uh, Linux without really, you know, researching it and trying it out for yourself. Granted. Virtual machines aren't, you know, the perfect way to see what the, it would be like on your hardware, on your hardware, but at least it's a start. I, I don't know. In so, in some ways, I agree with that, but at the same time, I, I really don't feel like, as as you kind of touched upon just there, you don't really kind of get the actual experience until you actually try and use it as a daily driver. You know, I don't really think running in in a virtual machine is really really the way to do that. I mean, when when I really switched over to it, to I, I, it was Ubuntu I switched to, and you know it was basically the only one I knew of, so I didn't really care either way. I just put it on. Um, I literally just installed it on my hard drive. Uh, I, I did dual boot, but I never really bothered with the Windows half. I just went straight on it, and you know the way that I learned was by you know, going on it and saying, oh, this doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Let's make it work, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I agree. I think there's definitely a bigger community around Linux, and depending on your distro of choice, there could be even a bigger community around that than, say, trying to get help uh, with Windows or Mac. It, oh, I think definitely. it's simpler. I think I think what the, the big difference that I found in in terms of like getting community support like that um, with Windows, what tended to happen was you wouldn't go on a Windows forum. You'd go on a forum for the particular app, particular application that you're using, or the particular kind of workflow that you're aiming for. Like for example, like I was big into music production, and so when I had a problem doing music on Windows. I wouldn't go on a Windows forum. I'd go on, uh, you know, a forum full of musicians or a forum full of, you know, um, Sibelius users or a forum, forum full of Fruity Loops users. Um, and that's kind of the difference, I think, with Linux because really what I, what I had to do when I had problems with Ubuntu was go to the Ubuntu forums and say, who's using this program? How are you making it work? Whereas it was a different thing on Windows, it was the other way around. Yeah, I agree. But, you know, we got to make mention of, uh, before we start getting into, you know, how to pick a distro is, you know, there is a vast, um, I guess, contrast with a lot of people. So if you decide to pick uh, Ubuntu, you're going to have 20 people saying, oh, Ubuntu sucks. Don't use Ubuntu. <laughs> yeah. So I say whatever distro you're on, just stick to it. It doesn't matter. It's not like they're the ones using that computer. So if you wanted to use like Puppy Linux, which is a lightweight 
a Linux distro, use it. And uh, it shouldn't matter what anyone else thinks. So I guess don't try, don't get too sullen if people call you like an idiot for using a particular package or particular distro. Yeah, yeah don't definitely. don't fall into the trap of distro flame wars. Uh, anytime I see distro flame wars going on, I kind of just roll my eyes because, you know, no distro is absolutely perfect or 100% correct. Uh, what's correct to one person may not be correct to another. You know, I mean, it just depends on how, you know, how deeply you believe in, you know, GNU and, and FOSS in general. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're running Linux Mint, Debian, Manjaro, Zorin, um, Fedora, Arch. It doesn't matter. Linux is Linux. I mean, Linux is nothing more than, you know, the kernel. I mean, it's the core that Linux runs on top of. But as far as everything else, I mean, all the utilities that were used to build the initial underlying system, they're the same. The, um, all the, um, well, I don't, I don't want to say all the configuration files because it depends if you're systemd or running RC. But, I mean, you get the idea. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's nothing more than someone who took Linux, slapped a nice GUI on it, set up update repositories so that they could send updates to you, slapped a label on it, and said, here's my distro. That's yeah, all well, it is. Uh, you uh, could build uh, your own I distro think, if you wanted. I, I think it's a little bit un unfair to say that. I mean, yeah, generally, generally you're about right. You know, there are there are very small differences between, for example, Ubuntu and Mint or, you know, all those kind of things. But uh, I, I, I think I think there are there is a quite a lot more difference between some distros. It really just depends on which ones you go for. Well, I mean, you have your Red Hat distros, which got a slightly different file structure. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, but I was going to lead into my next point, which was, to me, what really makes a distro a distro is the package manager the the maintainers yeah. choose to use and how they go about maintaining that is unique uh among every distro yeah definitely because i mean using your example of kind of red hat obviously things like red hat um they obviously use rpm but they they will package things in a way that you know maybe don't get updated as often as some people would like i mean some people love the fact that it doesn't update that often uh, whereas something like Arch might obviously get you updates a lot more often. But then, I mean, th th there are kind of far more unique distros, even kind of outside of that kind of bubble. I mean, you have things like Mix, which is a completely unique distribution. It's not even, it does not even got like a normal Linux root file system. You've got things like Puppy and all that kind of stuff, which are made to kind of boot directly into RAM. You know, th there's all sorts of differences between distros. And so, I mean, you know, it's it's really just completely dependent on kind of how you, you know, again, kind of what it is you're looking for in the distro, isn't it? Well, I admire the beauty of how much diversity you can create yeah. with a Linux base. I mean, you know, you take a Linux core system, build on it, and, you know, there's over 100 different distros out there now as a result of it. Yeah, but we are on the verge of like the oversaturation part of it, especially with the Ubuntu ones, but that's a whole other discussion. So let's move on. The toughest question is, since there's so many distros out there, where do you begin in looking for uh, the correct distro? Most people have heard Ubuntu. That's probably the most popular outside of the Linux world. So yeah. if someone asks you, name a Linux uh, operating system, they'll say Ubuntu. So a lot of people either start with Ubuntu or Mint. Do you guys have, uh, I, I, I should ask, what's your top five newbie friendly, uh, quote unquote, newbie friendly distros that you believe uh, that people should try out right away. Um, I, 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 actually, I actually think Ubuntu is a good start, actually. I mean, I know a lot of people rag on it, but it is, you know, it's there's a lot of things in Ubuntu that, that we kind of take for granted, but when you switch, for example, if you've been using Arch for a while and you switch back to Ubuntu, you do notice some things that things like Arch just didn't have. 
and so it is it is it is kind of a good place to start i think um i've also had a, a quite a bit of success with um open source uh because that's to to me open source the people i've seen switch into switch into linux via that route have been not necessarily kind of newbie newbie user type people they've been kind of what you'd call a windows power user where you know they, they, they know computers pretty well but they don't necessarily know linux well so they're used to do it using things on windows like regedit and that kind of rubbish um and so when you switch over to open source it's i think it's very windows power user friendly well something like ubuntu is probably more generally new not necessarily newbie friendly but generally friendly to everyone else uh i, I can't i kind of have I'd had a bit of good success with other Ubuntu spins like the GNOME and the um, L L Ubuntu as well. That was a really good one. Um, Mint, Mint as well. Yeah, I've I've never had a problem with Mint uh, switching people over to Mint because uh, it's uh, the un my only thing with Mint is cinnamon is slow and people notice it when you put it on the computers. When's the last time you tried Linux Mint cinnamon? Just out of curiosity. Uh, my dad's still running it, um, but uh, he, he's he's got Linux Mint Cinnamon installed, but he also has XFCE installed as well, so he occasionally switches between the two on his boot menu, or not on his boot menu, but on his login screen. So every now and then, when you know big Cinnamon updates come along, he gives it another try, but it does just run a little bit too slow on his computer. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I think I tried right. Cinnamon right off the bat, and I didn't like it. I, I, I don't it's know what bad. it was. I no, it's not. It's, it's just a bit slow. Okay, wow. so... I'm, I'm surprised. The last time I tried Linux Mint Cinnamon was back in November with one of the newer Mint releases, and yeah. I was actually really impressed with how far Cinnamon has come. Oh, um, I actually... Yeah. I actually don't mind using it as a main desktop OS now because before I was using the Mate in Mate just because I did not I, I tried Cinnamon uh, I would usually try it at least once a year to see how how it's developed and I, I was always disappointed until yeah. recently in this past November where I was actually really surprised. It, um, it, Fedora it is, is another one that surprised me too. Oh, the, the the new Fedora releases have been really coming along, haven't they? But no. I've been yeah, blown away yeah, at, no, what, yeah. at how they've managed to make GNOME 3 run. Like, it is noticeably snappy and quick, and it, it's just such a drastic difference from, what was it, from when seven, it first eight started, years ago? Yeah. And it was it like, oh my god. When GNOME 3 first came out, I, 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 I facepalmed. I, I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> I think we're getting a bit off topic here, so... Yeah, just a bit. I'll, I'll bring us back on. Um, so... <laughs> One of the ones that we probably have to mention is uh, Linux Lite. Uh, that I think is kind of underrated by you know the bigger boys. It is a Ubuntu LTS, which is a long-term service, so you can have it uh, for like five or six years without really having to update. And it's based off of XFCE, which is a uh, desktop environment and what uh, Voltam who was the creator of the LDC uh, he makes it very simple to get all the applications and I the last time I ran it there was a script that says okay you're looking for like a Microsoft Office equivalent okay try LibreOffice press 3 to install it and it is simple like that so any type of uh, application that you're familiar with in uh, um, Windows you can find it on his list I don't know if it's changed too much but I think uh, Linux Lite is definitely one of the ones to move from like a XP Windows 7 to Linux. I think that uh, is a underrated one for sure. The one that I started with was Linux Mint. Uh, I felt like it was good and I did try the Cinnamon and the Mate and I stuck with the the Mate or Mate however you want to pronounce it. So it's very uh, that, that one's 
one of the most popular ones, and it's maintained by a, a definitely a group of devoted uh, developers for sure. I guess the other one, which doesn't get a lot of attention, is Zorin. Uh, you do see some reviews, but you can make Zorin look like Windows, or you can make it look like Mac OS. That's for sure. Uh, it is very. Uh, if you get the ultimate, which it's like ten bucks or something like that, you get all these features. But they do have a free version. Uh, but it's, I guess it's still limited a little bit, but not by much. It's very customizable, which is, you know, it, it may be a little on the bloated side, but if you're a new user and you've never experienced like a speedy Linux system, it really is a welcome. It, it, it welcomes you into a familiar environment depending on what you're used to. If you're used to Windows, they'll immediately theme it with a similar Windows style and then vice versa with Mac. Yeah, so <clears throat> a lot of the distros do cater towards window users because a lot of them just get fed up with how Microsoft is running it or they've gotten one too many viruses or whatever the reason is. So I thought I found a website as you can see on my screen. It's five Linux distros that look similar to Mac OS. So the first one which is called Elementary OS. You guys want uh have you guys tried that? I yeah. played with it on a netbook. It was actually surprising for considering the netbook only had a gig of RAM and a single core processor. Yeah, I, I, I had a, a similar to when I tried it. I, I, again, I tried it on my crappy little laptop, but you know, can barely be, boot the kernel up besides actually booting a desktop up. Uh, that thing, that thing ran elementary pretty well actually. Um, yeah, it's it's quite quite a nice desktop as well actually. Yeah, it's it, just. My my only thing with it is it's Ubuntu LTS again, so it's a bit it's a bit old stable for me. But it is really really nice desktop. Though. So the whole history with Elementary is Elementary was a icon pack that they turned into a distro. So a lot of the stuff that you see, start. a lot of the uh, stuff you see, they have like a bar that looks very similar to I or, or the Mac uh, uh, doc. And then I think it's based, it's its own desktop environment, and it's based off of Vala language, which is similar yeah. to Java. So it, I, I it's, um, it's, it's running on top of GNOME, but it's not GNOME shell. It's its own shell on top of it, similar to kind of what Solus does with, um, with their thing, and similar to kind of what Cinnamon used to be before they kind of moved over to their own kind of base. It's it's the gnome kind of stack, but then the shell on top of it is the own thing, I think, or something like that. Yeah, second one is called Mac Pop, which it's based off of Puppy Linux, which is a very lightweight. So if you're looking to put Linux on a, say, 10-year-old laptop computer or desktop, I think Puppy or uh, another one is very... Uh, it's a good choice, for sure. I looked at Mac, but I don't see any resemblance to Mac OS in it at all. I mean, it's just no. like MN17. <laughs> no, but it's part of this list, so I thought I'd mention yeah. it. But, uh, you know, uh, another thing to look at before I move on with this list is you have to look at your hardware, too, because if you are putting Linux on a older computer, you may not be able to run the latest and greatest stuff just because of the hardware requirements with it. So something like Puppy or another, I think there's damn small Linux, which you can run on just a couple of kilobytes of, of RAM. So it yeah. depends on your hardware for sure. But if you have a modern computer, then you can just run anything. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't, it's not only the actual power of the hardware you have to consider either, it's the actual kind of, you know, the type of hardware you're running it on. Like, for example, my mum's laptop is one of these new fangled kind of tablet, laptop, touchscreen, convertible type things. And so, um, if you're wanting to kind of get the full experience, you need to look at a distro that supports, supports touch well. 
supports things like you know turning the screen around into portrait mode supports things like if if you're interested supports things like more touch uh, so I mean that's and and obviously even if it, even if it's just a standard laptop you need to find a distro that works well with like the hibernate and suspend when you shut the lid and that kind of thing as well so even that's a consideration um. Something else to consider too is if you are still the kind of person who relies heavily on a printer, um, you know, you got to make sure that the <laughs> printer that you're using is compatible with the Linux distro that you're using. Just because I've seen a number of reviews where people go and complain that, oh, my printer doesn't work with Linux. Yeah, that's another thing. You have to make sure that your peripheral devices are compatible with Linux. And, you know, I did buy a new hardware for my desktop, and I did see that little penguin on the side of it, so I knew that it ran just fine with Linux, and it did. So to continue this list, uh, there's only two more that I have, really. So there's a new one called uh, Trenta OS, which... From the screenshot that you guys can see here, it does look like Mac OS X for sure, because they got the uh, the bar down here and the launcher up here. To me, it looks like uh, GNOME with Mac uh, OS icon pack for sure. So it's uh, I don't I think it's probably a couple years old. It's or even a couple months old for all I know. It is a newer uh, distro for sure. So Not I will really a whole lot on that side. No, that, so I will just so we can keep moving on. Uh, I'll leave this uh, this article in the description below. Um, if you guys don't see it, please let me know and I'll add it in there. But. Uh, do you guys have uh, any other pieces of advice for uh, the new Linux user? Um, patience is definitely a virtue. Uh, don't be afraid to do some Google searching or even search the forms of the distro itself. Um, Linux Mint has a decent form community. Uh, so does OpenSUSE. I don't know too much about Zorin OS's community, but another uh, distro out there that some people might find also very beginner friendly and welcoming is Uber Student, which is one that Doss Gregor had done a review on a few years ago, and it's still out there and kicking. So, yeah, I would say, you know, don't be afraid of, you know, diving into the command line at any point, but initially when you first make the switch, I would say just focus on spending time getting comfortable with the desktop environment. Figure out where the applications are that you care about using. Um, you know, I, I, I think I think the important thing is, uh, as you were saying, kind of don't be afraid to to kind of Google, but also don't be afraid to try new things. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not Windows, it's not Mac OS, it's its own thing. So you know, uh, don't 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 go into it thinking, oh, you know, it'll be just like it'll be exactly like Windows. It'll be exactly like what I'm doing on OS X at the moment. You know, I'll be, I'll be able to run all my all my software in Wine. It'll be fine. Uh, if you're going down that route, you're gonna set yourself up for failure, I think. So you know, be be prepared to try new software. Uh, not just the desktop, not just the OS itself. But the software, you know, um, you know, if you if you want to use, if you're into kind of music production, well, again, this is just this is just kind of my thought, thoughts again, kind of my experience. If you're into music production, don't go into it thinking, oh, I'll put my all my music production software in Wine because it just won't work for you. Better off to use, you know, actual native solutions like LMMS or Ardor and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I agree. Definitely um, try new things. I say uh, most likely you'll either do Ubuntu or Mint or any of the other suggestions that we did, but give it like a month or two for sure because yeah. if you guys, you know, there's a, a term called distro hopping, which means a person just keeps hopping from distro to distro 
for whoever on a long time, but they're not really settling on a distro. It's nice to, you know, try new things, but if you're comfortable on Ubuntu, stay on Ubuntu. There's nothing wrong with that because it, you know, with the new distro release, you don't have to update, unlike, you know, Windows or Mac, where you have to update when it is released, and it's completely free. So there's, like, no financial, except for the computer, no financial um, stuff that you have to do for it, unless you want, like, a new peripheral and stuff like that, but it is completely free. There are some paid apps that you can get in the uh, app stores for distro, and uh, but, yeah, I say give it a month or two, and if you're still not happy, go on to another one, you know? It's... Uh, it's entirely how comfortable you are with the distro that you've decided. Yeah, most definitely. I, I would say, I guess as a, as a closing note, is if you're deciding to venture into the Linux world, um, try to have your expectations in line. Uh, don't go into it expecting everything to be the same or everything to be as... Uh, as easy as you're used to, you know, go, be be prepared to, to do a little digging, a little research. But, you know, it, it's not like you're going to be stuck and stranded. You know, all the beginner distros out there are great at, you know, helping set up a, you know, user-friendly environment for you. I would say just take the time and explore a little bit and get familiar with, um, you know, Linux as an operating system and using it, in you know, on a on a daily basis. Yeah, and then... If you do decide to get help and someone's like, uh, what distro you use or what application, and then they call you an idiot, don't let that get to you. If you're comfortable with Microsoft Office through Wine, then use it. But, you know, it, again, these people aren't using that machine. You are. So definitely uh, just, you know, stay the course and you'll learn a lot for sure. I learned a lot in my four years that I've been on uh, Linux. So, uh, well, it, it, but by the same token, though, you, I mean, if you don't want to kind of do all the learning, if you don't want to dig into it, you don't necessarily have to. Exactly. You know, go, going off what you're saying about you know ignoring all the people who call you a noob for using Ubuntu, you know, <clears throat> if you don't want to be using the command line all the time, if you don't want to be you know, learning how to write system D scripts and all that nonsense. You don't have to. You can use it just as a desktop. It's fine. Half the time, that's how I use mine. I just use it as a place to watch YouTube videos, chat with friends, and that's it. So I'm pretty exactly. basic with my Linux this setup. So, But uh, I think uh, we'll probably call it an episode. I think we've been going on for close to a half hour so. <laughs> um, do you guys uh, have any like one last piece of advice? No, I I repeat yeah, myself. I, I, I suppose one last thing I could possibly say is um, it's always easier if you've got someone helping you. Uh, like for, for example, you know, my both my parents are both running Linux on their computers. They wouldn't have been able to do it without me. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to big myself up, but you know, without me helping them along, you know, uh, I, you know, they wouldn't have done it without me pushing them to it. I suppose. So it's always worth having someone there who can help you along, who can kind of, you know, make it work for you, uh, pick it, pick it up when things kind of blow up in your face, you know. Yeah. If if if, if even if it's not someone who's kind of kind of physically there with you, even if it's someone like you know, the LDC IRC channel or something along those lines. It's always a good idea to have someone who's kind of who can help you out even even just on the simple one when you first start. Yeah, and on that note, most distros do have an IRC channel yeah, where you IRC can go and ask phones, questions. Great options, yeah. Yeah, I uh as on my screen I have my WeChat open, my RC uh and I have Gentoo and Arch or the distros that I use, and when I need, I get help from there if I really need help, like, right away with an issue. So, yeah, definitely. So, I'm 
just going to call it a video and uh, let me know if you guys have any future topics for uh, the GNU's or LDC now or whatever we're going to be uh, calling it from now on. Probably just GNU's just, you know, sounds a little bit better. And then if you guys have any other ideas for me uh, for videos, I'm trying to find time to configure Awesome, uh, the new Awesome 4.0. Dot one uh, came out not probably not too long ago last year late last year so I'm trying to find time to try to configure it and then make a video on how I do it but if you guys want me to go to like gnome and show you how I set up a gnome if I ever go back to gnome I can do that too or KDE so please yeah, let me know fine. Yeah, so please let me know if you guys have any ideas, and uh, hopefully you enjoy it, and I will see you next video. Bye, guys. Right, see you later.